I didn't want to wait. I wanted to find Stucky, to get the key and get out as soon as possible. The waitress was giving me a headache. Overeager fans always did. Well, excuse them for financing your fancy New York lifestyle, you arrogant, ungrateful f Remedy Entertainment is one of those rare examples of studios that know exactly what they're good at and stop at nothing to perfect their formula. Over the years, they specialized in creating cinematic single player experiences with a strong emphasis on narrative and world building that more often than not stand the test of time and are enjoyable to play long after their release. Max Payne 1 and 2, despite being old enough to drive at this point, are still mechanically sound and enjoyable to play, but I'm not gonna spend too much time talking about them because you know exactly why they're so great. The gameplay, which was heavily influenced by Hong Kong cinema, the bullet time effect, as well as the gritty neo-noir style complemented by the use of graphic novel panels instead of cutscenes, were a breath of fresh air in an industry that was still trying to find its footing. With Alan Wake, Remedy Entertainment chose to step out of their comfort zone and explore new ideas. The filthy streets of New York were replaced by the rural Pacific Northwest and the story revolves around a geek novelist that has never carried a gun in his life instead of a grizzled undercover cop with nothing to lose, and a body count that led the IUCN to declare the New York mafioso a vulnerable species. You play as the eponymous Alan Wake, a successful novelist suffering from an awful case of writer's block who decides to take a well-deserved break from literally not working for two straight years by vacationing in the serene rural town of Bright Falls. He hopes that the picturesque small town will get his creative juices flowing again and presumably something else if you get my drift. I'm talking about the coffee, you perverts. Try the coffee. Just don't blame me when you fall in love. Cause it'll break your heart when you have to leave. See? After also displaying symptoms of unredeemable assholery, his wife disappears and he wakes up one week later in his crash car with no memory of how he got there. Alan soon discovers that his wife was kidnapped by an emo fog that is turning locals into murderous shadow zombies and that the events from his manuscript, which he doesn't remember writing, are coming true. So now it's up to Alan to save his wife and banish the supernatural forces infesting Bright Falls. Going further than this would be a disservice to those who haven't played Alan Wake because due to the nature of the game practically anything could qualify as a spoiler. Overall the story is well written as expected from Sam Lake who served as lead writer for this game and despite this labyrinthian structure it's surprisingly easy to follow. But it's not perfect and I'll explain why later. So for now let's switch gears and talk about the presentation. While there are a few shoddy textures here and there and the occasional pop-ups can get very distracting, the game still looks stunning even after all these years. The subtle light effects, the shadows, the smoke, particle and weather effects give this game a unique look and contribute to the sense of dread, paranoia and foreboding permeating this world. Even in its calmer moments you never feel entirely safe because the game does a great job of instilling a sense of paranoia and sheer confusion into the player's mind through clever use of sound effects as well as its carefully crafted environment. Though most of the game will take you through relatively open rural spaces like farms and logging towns, paradoxically you'll more often than not feel extremely claustrophobic. This is because the dark presence, aka the thick spooky fog that shows itself at night, is dense enough to make spaces feel smaller than they actually are and to partially obscure vision, but not to the degree that it renders players functionally blind. This in turn aggravates the sense of unease and reinforces the notion that something is not quite right with this place. It's kind of hard to explain. Think about the uncanny valley and replace singing robots with I don't know, optics and you'll get a clearer picture. This is not to say that Alan Wake is all doom and gloom. While the nights are spent fighting the supernatural, daytime will have you do some investigative work and interact with the eccentric inhabitants of Bright Falls. This is when you'll realize how much effort went into recreating the Pacific Northwest in all of its beauty. I'm aware that Remedy are famous for the authenticity of their worlds, but holy fuck did they outdo themselves with Alan Wake. Look at this shit. It's insane. It's so pretty. I'm gonna cry. This is a Death Cab for Cutie song here. Oh, and speaking of character interaction, boy do these people love to hear themselves talk. I swear to god it's like watching Fargo but with no Minnesota nice accent and long monologues about the intricacies of logging and fishing. I guess I'm a little worried. 
We got a bunch of campers out there. We have Shut up, man. I'm trying to screen cap a thumbnail. But what makes Alan Wake's presentation stand out from other games is its TV show format. The main game is split into six episodes, with two additional ones added post release as DLC. Each episode, except the first one obviously, starts with a recap of previous plot points and has all the makings of your standard thriller TV show, like cliffhangers, unexpected plot twists, and a wide cast of supporting characters that have some connection to the dark forces infesting Bright Falls. If you've been banging your heads against the desk like that guy from the Idols video trying to figure out why this setup seems so familiar, that's because Alan Wake was directly influenced by Twin Peaks and The Twilight Zone. I'm not going to start listing their similarities because I've seen neither of these shows, so just take my word for it, okay? One of Alan Wake's strong points is how it managed to blend everything I've mentioned until now, like the TV show format, the narrative, and the sense of unease transmitted by his visuals with the gameplay. Throughout the majority of the game's duration, Alan Wake will have you fight these mindless ghouls called the Taken. These are normal people like loggers, miners, police officers and so on that have been possessed by the same dark forces responsible for the disappearance of his wife. They are super pissed off and usually carry some type of blunt or sharp object that they'll either swing or throw at you, presumably to get your attention and ask if you'd be willing to listen to their mixtape. One quick note about the Taken, I was pleasantly surprised to see that instead of taking the easy way out, Remedy decided to put their own twist on the zombies. Instead of growling and snarling like you would expect, the Taken just spew utter mundane nonsense in these distorted voices which makes them terrifying in a weird way. Happens for rent in oh hell. Carl. Ducky, please to beat you. Non refundable reservation has required. Fair and square. The gameplay is very simple. You stick your flashlight in a zombie's stupid face until the dark shadowy goo surrounding them dissipates and then finish them off with your revolver, shotgun or hunting rifle. Think of the darkness as a type of shield that renders enemies impervious to damage until it's destroyed. By holding the right click button you can boost the power of your handheld light and destroy the darkness faster, but it will also drain batteries more quickly. When the Taken get too close for comfort, hitting shift at the right time will make Alan graciously dodge attacks, sometimes in slow motion. Though the the number of weapons is limited, this lack of weapon variety is compensated by the excellent shooting mechanics. The shooting feels very good and visceral and the guns have a satisfying punch to them. It makes sense why they chose to include only a handful of weapons as mowing down the Taken with an assault rifle is not as tense as, you know, shooting them with a rusty revolver and then struggling to stay alive while anxiously reloading it. Despite appearances, the gameplay is surprisingly complex in its simplicity. It took me a while to notice that there is a healthy amount of variety in terms of enemy type and behavior. Early game enemies are more straightforward in the sense that they'll just charge you like idiots, so they're easier to deal with. However, as the game progresses, you'll notice that the Taken, besides roaming and bigger numbers, become increasingly harder to fight. I don't know if there's a mandatory Taken training program that the story omitted to mention, because my god, by episode 3 I could've sworn I was fighting commandos instead of brain dead zombies. I don't know who thought it'd be a great idea to train zombies in the ways of guerrilla warfare, but somebody should do something about this. Yo, Pat, could you fuck off with your folksy local radio host shtick and do your job for once? Nobody cares how many rainbow trouts you caught last week, there are zombies executing pincer movements in your backyard, man. <clears throat> anyway, as I was saying, if early game zombies will charge you like a bunch of suicidal heruli, later they start displaying signs of, dare I say, intelligence and self-preservation. The Taken will go out of their way to outsmart and outmaneuver you, either by attempting flanking maneuvers or outright ambushing you in tight spaces. There are three types of Taken. Regular sized Taken, which are your standard enemy types, big Taken, aka mini bosses, and well, boss taken. While some enemies are faster than others and throw projectiles, their major difference is the amount of time you need to shine a light at them until their shields are destroyed. Oh, which reminds me, you will also fight these possessed crows and random furniture pieces, which is kind of... meh. Surviving their attacks requires a high degree of, let's say, spatial and situational awareness. As you'll see, this is easier said than done because the game will try its best to tip the scales in its favor by triggering scripted weather effects to screw with your sense of orientation or having enemies attack you from all sides. One common tactic that I've seen that take in use consists of having the big boys charge you to distract your attention while the smaller ones creep from the flanks to chip away at your health. So obviously you'll want to maintain a healthy distance between your tweed jacket wearing gas and the zombies. To this end, the game puts several light-based weapons and accessories at your disposal. 
You can use flares to ward off hordes of the taken, flashbangs to obliterate large groups and flare guns to quickly dispose of tougher enemies. Or if the odds are stacked against you, you can always run to the nearest lampposts which serve as checkpoints and safe havens where the taken can't hurt you. That is, if the game doesn't decide to get cute and destroy the checkpoint as you're reaching it. So on the whole, I find the gameplay anything but repetitive, even though functionally speaking it kinda is. Let's be honest here, there's only so much variation the devs could've introduced when 90% of the gameplay consists of shining a light in a Taken's face and shooting it until it drops dead. It's up to the player to look for creative ways to shake things up and to the game's credit it's designed in such a way that it subtly encourages players to do just that. So for example you can find an alternative weapon to the one you're holding halfway through the level or get lured off the beaten path to a hidden supply cache. Though Alan Wake is functionally linear, this aspect never bothered me thanks to its stellar pacing. Despite a slow start that almost made me quit out of boredom, things start to pick up around the third episode when the something crazy is going on and everybody thinks your crazy phase of the story concludes. The game does a great job of mixing things up and keeping players on the edge of their seats. One moment you're frying taken with searchlights and hitting them with your car and the next you're struggling to cross a bridge that is being slowly disintegrated by the darkness. It's clear that the devs were fully aware that being constantly on the run and shooting your way through hordes of enemies gets boring very fast. So they inserted these, I like to call them palate cleansing sections. They can come in the form of a simple puzzle or a daytime driving section where you can explore the surroundings and learn more about Bright Force's rich but screwed up history. Then there's the explosive, catharfic moments like when you're fighting several waves of Taken during a rock concert with your manager and best friend Barry. I'd play it with sound if it didn't contain a licensed song by finishing the rock band Poets of the Fall so you'll have to trust me when I tell you that it's probably one of the best video game moments I've experienced in my life. Oh, and the soundtrack is great by the way, you should totally check it out. It out. I've mentioned earlier that the story, despite being compelling and well written, is far from being perfect. The story is very exposition heavy and relies too much on Alan, who explains every single facet of the plot and the lore like he's giving some kind of crash course on how not to tell a story. This would have been fine and all if Alan wasn't so bland as a character. His three defining traits are that he loves his wife, which is questionable considering how shitty he treats her. Hey, Did you watch the show? I didn't say anything stupid if that's what you wanted. Are you gonna start with me about drinking now? You know what? I should have followed her advice, now. but suddenly I was angry, mostly at myself, and she was there, a convenient victim. His admiration of Stephen King and his knack for dropping the occasional pop culture reference. Okay, I get it, you're smart, but who are you trying to impress with your references? Like, <laughs> imagine if I did that in my videos. Right? On top of that, he comes across as a bit of an asshole and not in the, you know, cliched asshole with a heart of gold kind of way. No, he's just rude and arrogant and entitled. What an airhead. Jeez, Mr. Takes a Swing at Everybody. He's the type of guy who you'd see in the YouTube comments section of an old rock song longing for the supposed good old times when music was real, man, and not this trap hip hop 22 savage Kendrick Lamar nonsense. Seriously, he's so unlikable that I found myself rooting more for side characters like Barry, who is an absolutely adorable goofball. I'm Alan Wake. I'm always right about everything. And if I don't get my way, I'll sulk all day long. I'm always intense and moody. It makes me very attractive and mysterious. Right now, I'm just standing here because I need my best friend Barry to carry me. But that's okay. I could just take him for granted. Guess that one saw the light, huh? You didn't like that one? A tough audience. Well, I got plenty more. What? What are the Christmas lights for? Protection, man! Like garlic against vampires? Vampires. Even the way he dresses is off-putting. What are those? Jeans? Cargo pants? Who told him that matching a hoodie with a tweed jacket is a good idea? He looks like a twice-divorced sociology professor from the Twin Cities. As good as Alan Wake looks, the game, not him, there are some parts where the engine betrays its age. The facial animations are... Ugh, not good. Alan and his wife especially make these duh faces that can be very immersion breaking. Then there's the motion blur, which you can't turn off. 
Actually, you can remove it by messing with the game's files, but I didn't do it. I've already delayed this video by several days by accidentally deleting all my footage like a dumbass, so I didn't want to risk another disaster. Well, that pretty much covers it. I've enjoyed my time with Alan Wake and I regret not giving it a go earlier. It's not a timeless experience in the way that the first two Max Payne games were, but it's still a great game and I highly recommend it. Obviously, there are a lot of things that I didn't cover, like the themes and the moments where Alan Wake goes into full trope subverting territory, so I'll let you discover those things by yourself. As always, thanks for watching, and if you liked the video, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing for more content. See you next time.